This is Ruben Langdon, a.k.a. Dante, a.k.a. Ken Masters, and you are watching Grand Lethal 16. All right, good morning, everyone. So, we have another guest we are interviewing today. Would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Ruben Langdon, and i uh, guest here at Sacrodicar. Why are you here? Uh, I'm assuming why I'm here is because of my work in the video game and anime space. Mostly video games. It's uh, a little bit of anime background, but I've uh, been doing games, motion capture and voiceover stuff in games for several years now. Uh, my first video game motion capture gig was Resident Evil Code Veronica, mm -hmm. which was uh, captured way back in 1997. And I did the role of Chris, and I've been capture for Chris ever since um, there was uh, ever since he was done by Americans I guess there's been a couple game games that they couldn't afford to, to get me on them because <laughs> I lived in America and they uh, used Japanese actors uh, the voice has sort of changed over the years but um, the mocap has it's been me so did uh, Resident Evil 5 and 6 and uh, also known for a character I voice and do the motion capture for uh, Dante, the cry, mm -hmm. uh, three and four. Not the new reboot, that was a totally different deal. Mm -hmm. But um, that also, oh, the big thing this week, I guess, is uh, Street Fighter. So I do the Street voice Fighter for. Five. Street Fighter 5. Street Fighter 5. Do the voice for Ken Masters. Nice. Did you ever envision this level of success when you were just starting out? Uh, I, would, I don't know this level is exactly this level of, of success, but I definitely knew Chris was an already established iconic character as well as um, Dante. You know, they're, they're, by the time I did three, there was already two Devil May Cries out and pretty successful. And uh, so the character was already established. And the same with Chris being in the original Resident Evil. And we're doing, you know, uh, Code Veronica. So uh, the only difference was, you know, they had Japanese actors doing the motion capture before. So I knew I was sort of walking into something that was already established and successful and there was going to be some sort of um, repercussions in a positive way mm -hmm. in doing that. Uh, I didn't realize it was going to continue to keep going. You know, this is the 20th anniversary of Resident mm -hmm. Evil. I had no idea it was going to, you know, so many uh, renditions or iterations mm -hmm. of, of that series was going to, just going to keep going and going and <laughs> going. Uh, so, very grateful for that because I've been employed and <laughs> you know, I get to come to these conventions and talk about my work, and uh, yeah, super awesome. Okay. Great. And then on that line, what impact do your fans have on where you've taken your career and what kinds of roles you pursue? Uh, well, I'm hoping, <laughs> that, um, based on the fan, uh, uh, the fans' comments and, and concerns and presence over the Devil May Cry reboot. Uh, there's been a lot of talk and rumors uh, within Capcom and outside of Capcom, uh, just on the, you know, you can just YouTube. Uh, I've noticed. Um, <laughs> Devil May Cry 5, and people are going nuts saying, you know, we want, they're sort of demanding a new one. There was a petition out at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember how many signatures it got, but, uh, you know, fingers crossed that mm -hmm. that actually turns into something. So I think the fans definitely are, are sort of, speaking their mind and obviously you know with sales too because I know the re reboot didn't do as well as Capcom had hoped and uh, maybe that's a testament you know from the fans yeah. to say hey oh, yeah. hey we like this character or this this rendition of the character this way let's go back to that we mm -hmm. want another one you know you did it was great but let's we want more so mm -hmm. hopefully the fans are speaking well the fans are definitely speaking but Hopefully Capcom will listen to some of that fan oh, talk amen. and actually do something about it. So oh, yeah. I got my fingers crossed because me too. that will uh, <laughs> keep me employed and also, um, you know, give some service to the fans. Of course. Was there any particularly notable easy role that you've had in voice over work or stunt work? Easy role? Hmm. Uh, I did get to go in, um, I think it was maybe Ultra 4, Street Fighter Ultra 4. Mm -hmm. I went in and I literally had to do one shoryuken, um, and I got paid, you know, union rates. So it was like, nice. um, 
that was probably one of the highlights of my career. I was like, yep. And I did one take. And we were said, done. And they said, thank you. And I have some lunch and head home. I had some lunch, got, had some coffee, and uh, got the check in the mail and was stoked. So, I bet. so, <laughs> so that, was, that was one of the easier things. That's, that's amazing. We're not all that way. Most of them are not that, that, that actually. So. We were speaking to Kyle yesterday, um, yeah. of course, Voice Radio, and he was mentioning again that. Whenever a new iteration, like Ultra comes out, yeah. Super Street Fighter Arcade Edition, they added a second Ultra move in you guys right. had to do. Yeah, yeah. You guys just come in there like three takes everything. There's only so many yeah. noises we can make for getting hit or punching something right. and then we're out again, you yeah. know, till the next rendition. Yep. Yeah, that was that was that's what's cool about I guess having these established characters that keep coming back in mm -hmm. future projects is uh, you get called back for it. So, you know, if you're going out for a game audition and like I knew when just going to the audition of Street Fighter was like a highlight of my career because I'm a huge Street Fighter fan. Mm -hmm. And um, and getting getting the role when I actually got the call and said, Yeah, you really can. I was like I was flipping out. I bet I was not expecting <laughs> I thought it was at least I was so excited just to be like Dan or one of the minor characters. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> I remember auditioning for Dan, oh cool, a new character. I had no idea it was gonna be that cheesy. But um, yeah. Uh, I was like so excited just to go to the audition and then to actually get the role and to be Ken of all characters which was a character I used to play in Street Fighter 2 growing up so uh, pretty pretty stoked to, mm -hmm. to do that. And then were there any notably difficult roles, ones that took more work getting into? Yeah, um, let me see. You know, Devil May Cry uh, was sort of my first breaker into the voiceover world. I was mostly doing motion capture and physical stuff until then. And I, it did take uh, it did take a lot of work. I remember uh, Mary Elizabeth McLean, who uh, was the voice director, she did just done tons of stuff, Ghost in the Shell, as a voiceover actress. She's mm -hmm. been in everything. She's directed by Naruto and um, tons of stuff. Yeah, her often. She's been at cons all the time. Uh, have you met her? Not yet. You will. On my short list. <laughs> um, so she really worked with me to uh, get the voice where it needed to be and, and just overall voice acting. So that, Don't Make Cry 3, that role was difficult to voice just because I hadn't had the experience. Mm -hmm. I had to learn mic technique. I had to learn uh, uh, a lot about um, voice acting, yeah, which, I, which was new for me. So it was sort of like both. Learning that, learning the craft and and trying to get the character mm -hmm. to sound where it needed to be right mm -hmm. to match all the other voices and everything. Octaves, enthusiasm, and expression, yeah. right? <laughs> exactly. Have you ever played Street Fighter? Oh, yeah. Okay. The I'm newer sorry. ones, where are you? I haven't voice? played the new one. I haven't played five. So tonight, I'm super I'm excited because I haven't bought a PlayStation 4. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm in the industry. I need to do that. But uh, my career sort of shifted a bit into other realms. So I don't play as many games as I used to, and I the only game I really enjoy playing, or that I I shouldn't say that, the only game that I make the time to play enjoy even turning on because I know if I turn on any other game, I get sucked in. Like The Last of Us, mm -hmm. I got sucked in, and for three days I didn't. No, my life stopped. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> happened. So um, Street Fighter is nice because you know it's rounds. You can go in, commit in, commit. You can out. come in. You can t you can sort of pre tell yourself, okay, I'm only going to do. You know, three games, three rounds, and that's it. I'm calling it a quits. Mm -hmm. And there is sort of a little self-control mechanism that you can add to that game. Uh, it's hard, but you can do it. Where the other games, you just get sucked in, and then before you know it, the day's gone, the night's gone. You haven't eaten. your you know. Oh yeah. It's it's ridiculous. No, so no I don't, or nothing. <laughs> yeah. So I don't even go there in those games anymore. Uh, Street Fighter's the only one. And then um, you know I've got I've got Ultra and all those. I've got mm -hmm. the 25th anniversary pack. Nice. And so Street Fighter is really the only game I play these days. Um, and I haven't gotten into 4, which I'm going to do tonight. Mm -hmm. So that'll be fun. The first time you booted up... Oh, I'm sorry. 5. 5? Yeah. No worries. The first time you booted up, say, Street Fighter Devil May Cry, what was it like when you heard your voice on the screen when someone was playing or you were playing? It was... Devil May Cry was the first time uh, I had actually heard, you know, you push a button and then, hey, my voice comes out. So that was... Mm -hmm. uh, at first, it was kind of like, "Whoa, this is trippy," but um, then you get kind of get used to it, and then it's then it's just like background noise, you know. Mm -hmm. Somebody's playing. You don't even think it's like something you don't even think about anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I don't know. 
it, it, I guess it just grows on you. So by the time Street Fighter came out, I was like, oh yeah, just mashing buttons That's me. and <laughs> voice coming out. That's, I'm used to that now. So it was sort of a novelty thing when it first happened in Devil May Cry 3, but the novelty wears off pretty quick. Now, since you you are one of those unique voice actors that does the motion capture as well, is there any, any certain thing, maybe not method acting, but any certain thing you do when you're doing the voices for, say, Kenner or Dante? Like, you go in there, and Kyle mentioned that you can't motion much, even if you have to throw a punch or a kick, and that's what you have to sound like, because makes... you'll hit the mic, and the engineer is uh, going to have a talk with you. Uh, yeah, I've, I've done my share of uh, messing up sound from physical movements in the booth. Mm -hmm. But, so I have to, what I do is I actually have to put my hand, my thumbs in my pockets loop and loop them in and I clench the pockets and oh, no. ev and that's the only way otherwise I'm gonna destroy the booth <laughs> because I am very physical with all my movement force so I'm sitting here if you see me in the booth I'm like <laughs> <laughs> trying not to make any noise but uh, that's the only way that's my secret technique that I found to that's to, awesome. to make to make the efforts and the sounds mm -hmm. without destroying anything or making other sounds that I'm not supposed to make. So do you have a dream role? You've already done Ken and Dante, so you're up in the echelons of Capcom. I have, uh, my dream has been completed, I could say, with Ken Masters. That was literally, uh, uh, I guess, if there's any other dream role, let me think. Um, no, you know what? I, I, can, I can die, and I can honestly say when I'm going through those pearly gates that I've done it. I feel good. Thank you. Thank you, God. You gave me, <laughs> me Ken and Dante. That's all I need. <laughs> you've been, you've been a little Chris, sure. but yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely those two. Where do you see yourself in five years? I mean, is there is there any like? I mean, you said you've had all the roles. You need to be happy and right, good. Right. But. Well, so my career sort of, uh, or my interests have sort of shifted in goals, and I'm sort of working in a new uh, field of um, it's called ufology or extraterrestrial research. And I've been in that field for several years now, and actually speaking at other conventions about the subject matter. So I'm, I'm an advocate for disclosure of uh, an extraterrestrial presence engaging humanity. And I've been uh, just researching that field and doing tons of, if you follow me on Facebook or Twitter, I do a lot of posts and, um, and other, have some other series, documentary series that I'm working on in that space, and I'm sort of getting that that work out there. So that's sort of where a lot of my work is going. I'm still doing the motion capture and I still get called to do uh, gigs all the time, but it's kind of like 50-50 right now, pursuing that work. Of course. Do you have anything you'd like to say to your fans at home that couldn't make it out this weekend? Alright, well... Show you can... <laughs>